Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in this week's video we're going to revisit a project I did uh, uh, four years ago. Uh, in that project I made some pencil holders that resembled the cylinder from a revolver. Now I usually try to give credit if I see an idea on somebody else's channel uh, I usually try to give credit to where I got that idea from. To be honest with you, I do not remember where I saw this. I don't remember if it was an original idea. Probably not. I, I likely I saw this somewhere else. But in any case, what we're going to do is, uh, <coughs> is make, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to make uh, a couple more of these in, in today's video. The reason I'm revisiting this, <coughs> excuse me again, is that four years ago when I made them, I made a probably about a half a dozen of them, uh, gave them away to uh, some friends, uh, family and friends, and over the years I've got a lot of comments about them uh, from the people I give them to, uh, other people asking them where they got it from, uh, where can I get one, those kind of things, and I honestly just hadn't felt like revisiting that project. But we're going to today. I've got some material up. Let me get the camera tilted down a little bit and I'll show you what I got waiting in the wings. This is the material we'll be using to make the uh, cylinder themselves out of. This is a uh, inch and a half uh, by, I believe these pieces are 10 inches long. Yep. What I'm going to do, well, what I did first, and I'm not going to bore you with this on the camera, but I divided this into three equal pieces, parted them off, so I wound up with pieces that are just a little over, uh, just a little over three inches a piece, about 3.2 inches by the time you allow for the saw cut. This will make two of the cylinders. Make one on this end, turn it, make one on that end, then we'll part it in the middle. Nothing really spectacular about the uh, work prep for this. Again, just dividing it into three equal pieces, uh, facing the ends, and winding up with something like this. Now, for the bases, for what I'm using for the base, for it to set on, I look for some round stock about uh, two and a half inches in diameter. Uh, eighth inch thick. I wanted it thick enough so that I could countersink a screw in the bottom. And I uh, didn't really find any discs that were reasonably priced. But what I got was some flat bar. This is a uh, two and a half inch flat bar, eighth inch thick, uh, by 12 inches long. And I divide that into five equal spaces. That gives me about 2.4 inches. I've already cut one off of here. But what I want to show you, it's not going to take us but just a couple minutes over on the mill to actually make these. So I'm going to spend just a little bit of time uh, showing you on the work prep of how I make these bases. Um, so let's turn over to the man saw and make a cut first off of this uh, flat, uh, uh, flat stock. All right, I'm over at the band saw now. Like I say, this piece I've already cut one off. But we're going to uh, cut four more pieces out of this one. Now I'll cut the rest of those off camera. But while we're right here, we're going to take a straight edge and find the approximate center of this piece just by going from corner to corner and this absolutely does not have to be exact but what I'm going to do is put a center punch on there when I say doesn't have to be exact if these bases don't turn out to be the exact diameter all the exact same diameter it's not a big deal simply because they will none of them will be paired together. So now I'm just going to set up my uh, compass and give myself a, a rough circle on here. 
you can see that pencil mark. Now what we'll want to do is while we're right here at the bandsaw is take some of these corners off. Alright, we've got this, what's well, going to be our base, circle base, roughed out. So I'll meet you back over on the lathe and I'll show you how I turn this round. Alright, we're over at the lathe now, and the way I'm going to hold this piece in the lathe to turn it round is with this little arbor that I've made up. This is nothing more than a piece of, uh, uh, from my uh, small parts bin, <clears throat> two inch, maybe by two and a half inches long. And all I did was take a ball end mill and put a grid pattern, maybe a hundred thousandths uh, deep, as you can see in that, like a waffle iron. And you'll see the purpose of those ridges in just a moment. But I'm going to mount that in the lathe chuck. Now remember we punched a little center in here just to use the compass to uh, give us a rough circle. I've got the line center in now. What I'm going to do is take the back of this piece and I've got some of the, this is called Rapid Fuse by DAP. It's uh, uh, super glue, crazy glue, whatever the uh, generic term for it is. But what I'm going to do is dab Some on the back of our piece. Now, that center hole that we put in here, and by the way, the, uh, the glue that I'm using here is the gel type, uh, which in cases like this seems to stay in place much better than the liquid does. All right, so we'll take our live center point, put it in that center that we put in the piece and bear down on it good and tight. The, the bottle says this sets in 30 seconds. I found if I give this about five minutes or so to set, it seems to hold a little butter. So I'll bring you back when this has had a few minutes to set up. Okay, I think our glue has probably had time to set now. Alright, so what I'm going to do it just touch off, and I've done numerous, very numerous pieces holding it in this method: steel, aluminum, brass, uh, eighth inch thick, up to uh, an inch thick. Uh, the secret seems to be just don't get in a hurry. Remember, we're just using a friction hold with the uh, tail stock and some super glue. As you're making cuts like this, with a, with a lathe this size, I can feel a little bit of vibration on that in, uh, interrupted cut, plus I can also hear it. So when the, when the interruptions get down, uh, much fewer, the vibration gets much less. Then we'll start checking to see how close we are to being round. All right, it feels and sounds like maybe I got one, maybe two places left. And right there is two. So I'm just going to only take about 20 thousandths at a time. And again, listening and uh, the feel. And of course the strings get longer then too when it's not interrupted cut. All right, that's round. So I'm gonna put just a little chamfer on the edge. All right, now we can get the tailstock out of the way and the compound, and you're about to see what those little grooves in my arbor are for. 
this syringe right here is acetone. And of course, acetone is the enemy of super glue. So those little grooves that I cut in the uh, in the end of the arbor, I simply don't take a whole lot. All right, give that just a second or two to do its thing. Then take my soft blow, and there you go. See that cut that glue quickly. So the only thing that's left to do now to this other than cleaning up the glue is to carry it over to the drill press where we'll put that center in there I drill a clearance hole for an 832 screw I'm sorry a 1032 and put a counter countersink in it so that's the way the bases are made now let's turn it over to the mill and we'll <clears throat> start working on the cylinder itself all right now we're ready to start uh, working on the cylinder part of our pencil holder and as you can see I've got the uh, uh, vice jaw V block mounted in the vise now you recall using this before and actually the video where I made it uh, I showed drilling and tapping the uh, jaw mounting bolts so this could be mounted permanent and as I said in that if you're only going to do one off of something there's no real need of attaching that but I'm going to be doing several of these, only one on camera, of course. But uh, I went ahead and screwed that down in place. So once we find our center on a piece, we should be in center from then on. All right. So what I'm going to do first is just get that by eye close to the center uh, on the X and we'll come down just a little be sure I got enough clearance yep and with this edge finder uh, it does not need to be running so as you'll see up here in the DRO once I touch off here I'm on that back side and of course I can't see how much I got to go but I want to take it very slow all right I will zero out the y-axis now I will try that again just to double check as long as I went in the thousands I'm I'm happy All right, I'm within one tenth there. So now I'll come to the other side without moving the x-axis. That's a one eight uh, nine seven six. I'll see if that repeats. Nine seven six. So y one half. So if I bring that back to zero now and lock the uh, Y down, now I can come over here on the X, do the same thing. Zero out the X, double check. Dead on the money. So that's zero. Eight nine four six nine four six nine four six. So we go X one half and bring that back to zero. And there's the center of our piece. All right, now we can take the uh, center finder out or edge finder and the first thing we're going to do is use a center drill all right we're going to put us a 
a hole in the center or a starter hole. And while I'm in the center and locked down on the center, I'm going to go ahead and do everything I've got to do uh, here before we start our bolt hole pattern. So our center hole, so on these I'm putting a 3 16th hole in the center. I think that looks a, a little more natural. And zero out my Z axis DRO there. This depth of course is not critical, but to keep them all about the same I'm going one inch deep. I will actually put a just a little countersink in that uh, by hand after we take this out. Now direct your attention over here to the uh, DRO. The first bolt hole pattern we're going to set up is this one for the uh, bullets, if you will. So on the DRO, I hit the, uh, see we're starting at center. But I hit the bolt hole pattern button and we're on the XY being a vertical mill, starting from center. Our diameter is 0.95. Number of holes is six. The starting angle is zero. All right, we're starting right here. We're going to go all around. I could just leave the ending angle as zero, and in this case, it would come back to that, or I could put the ending angle 360. Uh, different DROs uh, function differently, but in this case, starting angle is going to be zero. My ending angle I'm going to put at 300. Now here's how I got 300. There are six holes in this pattern. 360 degrees around. 360 divided by 6 is 60. So if I'm starting here I want that last one to be 360 minus 60 which is the 300 on the DRO. So here's our first hole position. It says uh, move the X to where it reads zero. And again, I'm just spotting them right now. Hole two. If you don't have a DRO on your mill, Bolt hole patterns make it worth the expense. I'll just continue through all six holes. That's three tenths of a thousandth. Fourth hole. All right, now we have everything spotted. I'm going to use a 3 8 inch drill bit. And notice I left the DRO setting at hole 6. It doesn't really matter what order you go through them. All right, now I'm going to re-zero out my Z-axis DRO. And I've, I'm going to do these holes uh, inch and a quarter deep. There's our inch and a quarter. Now we go back to hole five.
All right, that's all six of our holes. So we're going to get set up now to do the finger reliefs on the outside of the cylinder. All right, I've got a ball end mill, uh, a 3 8 ball end mill set up in the uh, mill now. And over here on the DRO, we're going to leave our bolt hole pattern for a moment and return back to center. All right, we're back in center now. But over on the DRO, what we want to do now is set up for this outside uh, finger grabs, I guess is what you would call them. But remember our entire diameter or, or our diameter of the cylinder is one and a half inches. But we're going to want to bring these just a little bit beyond center. Uh, that way we don't get into this edge too much right here. Uh, I pretty much drew this out on a little program that I'd written for multiple bolt hole patterns. This is our inner bolt hole pattern and this is our outer. And I just ran it on here just to be sure that uh, it was not going to cave the sides. So again, let's look over on the uh, DRO. We'll go back to bolt hole pattern. Again, X, Y axis. We're starting from center. Our diameter this time, instead of being one and a half the diameter of our raw stock, we're going to go 1.6. All right. And that's going to put the center of the end mill just outside of the edge of our workpiece. Number of holes, still going to be six. This time, though, our starting angle is not zero. Remember on this piece, when we started from center, our starting angle was zero. Here we want it to be 30 degrees. Again, six spaces around, and these were 60 degrees apart, 60, 120, 180, and so forth. We want this first one to start between zero and 60. So we set our starting angle at 30 degrees. Our ending angle now, remember that's 360 degrees. We're starting at 30, so 360 minus 30 is 330. Ending angle. So hole one, again, just like we did before, we move to the, uh, we go to each hole, and then we move the DRO to zero. And I know from experience, I'm going to run this a little faster. All right, so these first few, you won't be able to really see what's going on because uh, it's going to be on the backside of you from the camera. But once we get over here to three, four, five, you should be able to see them without issue. All right, one thing I almost forgot. We want to position, we want to get a zero for our ball end mill. So we zero there. Now let's go back to hole one. And we're going to carry these uh, one inch deep. Okay, on this hole you should be able to see a little better as far as what, I'm, what I've been doing around on making this little less than half hole. And as you can see that made the ball end mill made a nice rounded bottom. All right, 
that's got our six inner bullet holes drilled, our center spindle hole, and then our six uh, finger grips on the outside. So we'll return everything to center. All right, what I'm going to do now is take this piece out, take it out of the vise, uh, deburr it a little, uh, then flip it over, do the same thing on the other end. I'll do that off camera, but once I get that done, then we'll meet back over at the uh, uh, lathe and we'll part the two pieces. All right, I got both ends uh, machined over on the mill. Got them deburred and actually took a countersink and cleaned up the inside of each hole on, on both ends. I've got the center marked and I've got my parting blade uh, lined up uh, on that center mark. So we're going to part this 95% uh, of the way with the parting tool. It won't quite reach all the way through, uh, but once we get down to that point, I'll take it out, carry it over to the bandsaw, uh, finish cutting that, then we'll bring it back and clean up the bottom. And I'm going to do this with a power feed and just find that happy speed where it doesn't chatter. Alright, that's about as far as I can get uh, with the parting tool. I'm going to carry this over to the uh, bandsaw and just clean that little bit up in the center or finish cutting that little bit in the center. Okay, I've got the two pieces separated now and of course got this little uh, knob that we need to take off. So we'll set it back up in the lathe. I'm just going to use a facing tool. Okay, while we're right here, we're going to drill our center hole to mount the bottom with. That was just a spotting drill. And I think I misspoke while I go and said we'll be using a number 10 screw in this. This is an 832 that we'll be using. So this is the tap drill for an 832. All right, I'm not going to try to power tap that over here. I'm going to uh, carry it over to my little uh, hand tapper. I'll show you that in just a moment to tap these holes. But before I take it out, I do want to, uh, I don't want to put a, a champer on this because uh, I want it to set flat on the base. But I do want to knock that edge off a little bit. That burr off that edge. Okay. All right. I'll do the same thing to the other one. Then we'll meet over at the hand tapper. Okay. I'm over here at this seldom seen workbench uh, in the tin barn. And the reason it's seldom seen is it's always full of junk. And right now it's even uh, more cluttered than normal. Uh, this wall right behind me back here is a closet that most of this stuff had been stored in, but I'm in the process now of renovating that and making it a, a bathroom, or not a bathroom, a restroom out here in the tin barn. But I'm sure you're all familiar with these hand tappers. I've got this uh, tap in now for an 832. I've got my, uh, one of my cylinders, pencil holders mounted in the, uh, in the vise. And even though this is aluminum, I'm going to use a little rapid tap anyhow. And with this long handle up here, you can put a lot of torque on, on a tap. But being the soft aluminum, uh, it goes in pretty easy. If you ever buy one of these uh, hand tapping machines, it comes with a handle on both ends. And I can assure you, one of the first things you want to do is take one of the handles off of it. Don't you beat your arm to death uh, as you're tapping. 
there we have a nice 832 hole tap. I'm going to do the other one off camera, then we'll meet back over at the workbench and finalize this video. All right, about the only thing left to do now is assemble them. Or the only thing left to do on this video is to assemble them. Now, I'm a little bit undecided on what kind of finish I want to want to put on these. Um, I know some of them I want to leave the natural. I want to polish up the aluminum, leave them natural to replicate a nickel-plated uh, revolver. Some of them I think I'll put a flat black paint on or powder coat. Uh, here's one that I made from steel. And I thought about doing that, but I'll be honest with you, that steel, uh, making these side cuts right here with that uh, uh, end mill was a little bit tough on my uh, bench top milling machine. Uh, a lot more work involved doing this in steel than it is aluminum. Uh, but the once I decide on what finish I've got that I want to put, this has a uh, just a polished aluminum with a clear coat on it, which I'm sure some of them are going to be like that. Uh, but once I get it decided on that, there's one more step that I'll do, and that, of course, is to put some little rubber feet or pads on the bottom, just three small pads to, uh, for it to set on the desk, and, of course, my mark. So I've got enough material sitting here to make about 40 of these, 40 plus. Uh, so guys, I probably need to get busy. I hope you enjoyed watching this. Take care, and I'll see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.